Wait, what just happened to everybody? Well, we admitted everyone. Now there's only one person in the waiting room. Oh, so we're live right now? Yes. Oh, great. It's good to know. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for bearing with us. We're getting it all situated. So happy you could join us for our second poster Zoom show. We are focusing on the mediums and the small poster formats this, um, this time. If you were here in September, you saw a lot of the larger formatted posters and the medium sizes. So you'll see some of the medium ones again. Um, who we are, this is Hammer Fryer Gallery. And if we're meeting you for the first time, welcome. Um, we show contemporary local artists primarily um, in Sonoma County. We're up in Healdsburg. And then I come from a background of vintage posters. They will show uh, the, a couple collections here at the gallery too. Um, I may have met you before with vintage European posters. Before. And um, with the very sad passing of Elizabeth Norris, who I miss, and I'm sure many of you do as well, um, her, the, her to us up in uh, Healdsburg as well. So. That's primarily what we're going to be seeing tonight is the work of Elizabeth Norris and her beautiful collection. We're also going to see posters from the vintage European posters in Maui. And if you haven't had a chance to visit them, please do when it's safe to do so. They are open in Lahaina. And we're seeing also some posters from some local vendors too. So we're putting them all together. If you received the email I sent about a half an hour ago, there is a link there to a Google Sheet which has all the names, dates, conditions, and prices of the posters being shown tonight. There's a few at the bottom that didn't make it on the list, but we can um, go over those. If you didn't receive that, don't worry about it. How this works, because we can follow up with you with all that info. How this works is I'm gonna flip through the collection and please use the chat feature set, set to everyone in order to express interest in a poster if one catches your eye. My co-host is Jenna. She's got the red um, HF Hammer Fryer logo. So hopefully it's easy to see if you want to send any private messages like, I didn't get that list. Can you email it to me? Here's my email. Here's my phone number or whatever. You can send those messages to her. If you're expressing interest in, say, the Soufre Gray beautiful poster to start with, um, please set your chat to everyone and say, I would love some more information on that. We are going to follow up with people in the order in which our transcript says your name. Um, and we'll try and do that as quickly as we can after the show. All right. So without much further ado, I'm going to I'm going to get flipping um, behind me just to let you know, this is obviously a large poster. Um, one of the one of the beauties and I wanted to just show the scale these early posters were designed to color cover building sides and street corners. But they also did some beautiful gems and here actually are a few of the posters from my personal collection that I just wanted to bring in and show framed. Um, these three are from my collection and then the Tentoon Stelling and the little cap yellow which i'll point out later is uh, available they're available for sale. Um, yeah, so let's get going. So this is a beautiful poster from 1933, Soufre Gray. This is a stone lithograph and I'll mix in some more info about everything like that once we flip through. Um, but basically they're using slabs of limestone to do these prints. They've all been linen backed. It's a beautiful exhibition poster, the Eiffel Tower, and that is from the late 50s, 1959. Great posters from the 20s, new Hutchinson. So these are pneumatic tires. Posters are a great way to kind of see what the big innovations of the day were because everything would be made into a poster. Cigarettes Alba, love this guy. Also from the 20s, stone lithograph. James Hobson's Sons, 1920. I hope you can see these well enough with the camera up there. We can always follow up with JPEGs as well. Some of them are landscape. Great question. Um, probably less. I probably have maybe five on the table tonight out of about 200, probably more than that. Most posters, okay, I definitely have more than that, but. 
oh, okay, maybe one of maybe we could figure that out on the host side. And if everyone keeps theirs to mute, we'll try and pin my video so it's. Andy Warhol for the Chanel company. He designed these right before he passed away, actually. Um, yeah, most posters were oriented vertically. They were uh, charged, companies were charged display taxes based on the width of the poster. So A, it was a little more affordable to hang a vertically oriented poster. Also, if you did a nice long poster, it would look great, but you know, the next exhibition poster might hang right over yours. So it's also a smart move too, to do it vertically. Yep. Chanel and what? Oh, Laguna, yeah, that's a great one. So Monterey. Van Dauphine, great poster. It's a poster within a poster. So it's a little bit tongue in cheek and um, great price. This is a $400 poster, 1950. Um, the value of posters and the cost are based on a few different factors. So on the table tonight, you'll see posters from the $200 range and I think the most valuable on the table tonight is 4,200. So there's a range. Um, it's based on primarily the rarity of the poster. Dali exhibition, 1974. There's at least one person in the audience tonight that maybe handled this poster from their old vinyl record. It was um, folded upon printing and fit into the Bob Dylan album. Um, most were tossed, most didn't make it, um, and now it's quite valuable today. Lottery, so sweet, getting her pocket money. So the lottery in France, they had a drawing every week, a lottery drawing. So the poster artists had a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do every, every week to, every week to, So they're very sweet. They're very sweet. My microphone. My microphone. World War One. World War One. Nineteen. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, tech. everyone. Little tech. Monet's cognac. Monet's cognac. Yeah, we didn't make her oh, use posters, make her use as, much posters as, as much as they Europe did here in the US. In US. In the However, US. military posters, However, military posters, posters World World for, World World for domestic causes. Um, Actually, I um, have a piece here. I'll try and share it later. From World War One, from World War One, some did survive. Some did survive. 1935. 1935. Two ex two two exhibition posters. Two exhibition posters from Chilita. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Great piece for the, the fashionistas of Paris. It's a French rail poster from 1962. And for the lovers of um, chess, I don't know who uh, saw the Queen's Gambit, great show. And I know there's a big interest in chess now. This is a, um, a tournament in Puerto Rico. I've never seen this poster before. It's from 1969. Okay, I'll pause flipping. Are you getting both? So I don't know. Some people are saying there's too many mics on. I think it's okay. Okay, so if I okay, talk right now, now is this working now. okay for people's yeah. audio? Yeah. Uh, curious may have pulled one, but I care. Okay, Paris. And you know, also, if I miss pulling it, it's okay because everything will be here and we'll have that list to go back to. Um, Italian Cellini. 
This is a fun one I've never seen before either. This just got sent over from the Maui Gallery. Um, old, old Yale, there's actually some Hebrew text on here. It's from 1909. It says, till life's sun is set, we will never forget, but honor and love old Yale. And there's a little bulldog with a snaggle tooth. Super fun. A little bit more rare to find British posters. The British collected about one to 10 compared to the French. Yeah. And just to let you know, if you have that spreadsheet that I sent, every 10th um, poster uh, number is in bold and a little bit bigger. So every once in a while, I'll kind of orient us to uh, like right now we're on number 20. So you can kind of scan along there and see. So these are two posters by Otto Nielsen. He was the signature artist for SAS Airlines, Scandinavian Airlines. He was a watercolor artist, and you can see that influence. So this is for Paris. This is for Scandinavia. Otto Nielsen usually showed animals in his posters. So we've got the moose there. Perrier Water by Bernard Vimos is called Perrier Embrace. Beautiful poster. Kinder the, uh, is so cool. It's, it's actually Mexican dancers um, from circa 1920. Mm -hmm. Grab this, Mr. Moose. All right. Okay, here we have some local history. So this was put out by the California Wine Advisory Board in 1960s. Uh, up close, you can see printed 717 Market Street. The Wine Advisory Board commissioned an artist named Amado Gonzalez um, to do this whole series. They were shipped uh, all over the country, um, used in cookbooks. There are various corresponding illustrations for different varietals of wine. And then that is the map that shows um, the development of the state. This is Mies poster for tobacco, 1930s. Very sweet little series here. Jeunesse en plein air. Go outside, fresh air. Encouraging kids to go outside and play. Okay, lasting message. This one is little scooter. Very cheery. They're all by an artist named Irv Morvan. The, the scooter. Just put them all together. They're a fun series. They might be great for a kid's room. Okay. Chang and Pak Hongs. If you came to the um, first show we did in September, we had a big two sheet poster of these two magicians. They were very prolific. They toured all over Europe for I think at least a few decades. They were brothers and they were Spanish, but they adopted this whole persona being from the exotic Orient. This is the 1920s, right? So um, the French had this fascination, uh, or sorry, the French, the, all of Europe. So this was made in Spain, 1915. They're called Chang and Fak Hongs. Homage to Ben Sean, a uh, Calder exhibition, classic Calder shapes. World War I, Liberty Loan, the Calder? Uh, Fak Hong. Fak Hong, yeah. Um, All right. Um, Orangina, we'll call her the Orangina Bikini. This is by Bernard B. Mo, and he actually uh, was the creator of that Orangina logo, logo with the circular um, orange peel that they've been using for a long time now. Okay, those I've got a crop right on the table there. Okay. Um, these are more of the lottery posters. I kind of snuck a few together throughout the pile. So here she's harvesting her winnings. This is around Christmas time, must be. 
Just for reference, we're on the 40th poster. So there's the king, of course, with his winnings. And here she is. She's, I think she's sewing her coins so then she can go and harvest her winnings. Yeah. No, Amaro Blanqui. So that will not be on your reference list, but just to let you know, it is from 1894 and it's 40, 5,400. Um, it's an extremely rare poster. I've never seen it before. Um, you know, turn of the century, Art Nouveau. And when you see it in person, there's actually gold inks um, uh, in the lettering and along this banner here. Beautiful view behind her. It's a really stellar piece. And I'd say it's in A minus condition. Um, for Got it. For ranking posters for condition, you'll see some letters next to the, the poster title. So very fine, fine, very good, good. Those correspond to A, A minus B, B minus C. Mostly in this collection, we have A or A minus, and I'll point out ones that maybe had some paper loss, folds, tears. Um, but in general, if we can find it in very fine condition, we'll have that on the table. Got it, let's see. I called her the blue and white striped pinstripe dress. All right, Air France Planisphere. This one is great in person too. You can see um, all the exotic lands that Air France flew to. Got it. I'll just pull all of these lotos, keep them together. <laughs> all right, here's another great Perrier by Vimo. So Sure. Vimo, he did work for Bali, Perrier, Dior, a lot of fashion houses. All right, here is a Swiss poster for the Electric Simplon line. That's 1934. An exhibition of Vimo's work. So we just saw the Perrier, we saw the Bali earlier. So Vimo is considered a national treasure by the French. Again, the designer of the Orangina. Here he is again, Cross and Blockwell, tomato sauce. That's 1981. So he had a long, long career as well. The Munich Olympics did a really cool um, poster campaign. They actually did two. There was a sports series of which these are, and then an artistic series. So we'll see a couple of those. So these ones highlight individual sports, equestrian, and boxing, they're actually silk screens. So the ink is very saturated on the page. This was a um, type method that they used primarily in the 60s. These are early 70s for, for uh, commercial posters. The inks are really thick on the page. So um, actually in the printing process, it, uh, it wasn't uncommon for the inks to crack or to flake off. So actually, if you're trying to do a commercial run of posters, um, it wasn't a very affordable way to do that. So offset lithography became a lot easier. I actually don't know. I can look into that. Not, not that I have, but, um, but I will check it out. Um, let's see, all right, where are, are we? We are on, so this was 50. Um, really, a couple of really fun Folie Bergère in the pile. This one's called De Fleur, 1955. A um, exhibition, international exhibition of music and song in Toulouse, 1951, also gold inks. There's an equestrian here. Yeah, I pulled out the equestrian one. Italian chocolates, API Volgara. What's that? Uh, yes. So fun. This is the only Thai poster I have on the table. Visit Thailand from 1960. So all of these posters, you'll see this white backing. So this is um, called linen backing. It's an archival mount done by a paper conservator. 
showing the, the sunrise over the vineyard, really gorgeous printing. Um, when we find the posters, um, we will send them to a conservator. It involves washing the poster to deacidify the old paper and then wet mounting it to an acid-free paper with a canvas backing. Sure. There it is, yeah. This one is really nice in person, just like the Amara Blanqui. It has gold inks in the harp. So that would have been a more expensive printing process. It would have been a conscious choice by the commissioner to, um, to choose to print with those inks. This one. And again, if we do skip over the poster, don't worry. This is just for our reference later, but we'll be able to flip back for them. Um, I'm going to try and roll when I remember to, but sometimes when I'm talking, I'll just quickly go over there. I just don't want to have too big of a pile over here. There is no difference. Um, okay. Visit the spas. Bigger ones are easier to roll. Smaller ones are easier to put to the side. I don't always follow that rule. All right. Super cute. Here is a horizontal poster. Chantelle for her undergarments. Um, a celebration of posters of Vimo. So La Fiche is poster. Um, so this is an exhibition poster of Vimo's work. It's a stock image. So as the exhibition say change dates or move to different towns, more information could be added to this bottom white panel. Chantel, and which one? API. Roughly, I'm on 53, I think. And the API, oh, here he is. It's not, it's the same. Yeah, um, you know, conservation practices in general have evolved uh, over the years. The reason we even call it backing is that the early posters, Jen and I are speaking in code over here. Um, the early posters, poster collecting was a huge phenomenon, especially in France. And people would peel the poster down off the building side while it was still wet and lay it down on a piece of um, muslin or linen to keep it flat. So we call it linen backing today. That's early, early linen backing. There isn't, we haven't gotten there yet. Good eye though. Um, uh, today we're using cotton um, duct, like a canvas with an acid free paper barrier. Um, that will be the same. I mean, if it was done in the seventies versus today, it might be a different quality or consistency, but um, if a linen backer is working today, it'll be the same for the big, big ones or the small ones. This one was linen back some time ago. So actually it's, yeah. It's, it's pretty much the same. This one's a little bit lighter on the linen backing. Uh, Mountains of France, 1960. Oh, and I kind of went faster for this one, but this is Willie's Wine Bar in Paris. We'll see a few more of those. Mountains of France, 1960. And that is number 60. And I'm gonna roll this one because it's bigger and I'm remembering. This one? So Willie's Wine Bar in Paris, they commission a poster every year and use different artists and are given, the artists are given free reign. So there's um, a lot of different uh, designs. Um, this one was done in 2000. And uh, I guess if you go there to Willie's, they have a lot of their posters up. There's Willie's Wine Bar locally, obviously, amazing place. There's the seafood here in Healdsburg. The Willie's Wine Bar that unfortunately burned in 2017 had a couple great Willie's posters there. Um, yeah, so that's from that series. Travel to Norway, the fjords, this is 1950, travel poster. This one is ready to roll off the table. This is another. Oh, good, great. I like that our comment section so active. <laughs> not unrare in the posters, um, or not rare. 
these are our friends, the Fak Hongs again. So here's another one of their exhibitions, performances, showing all their tricks. Yeah, really beautiful. This one I'm just gonna go ahead and let itself off. Norway. I've never seen this poster before. This is this is gorgeous. Uh, Polish circus, super fun, great colors. 1970, travel to uh, Japan. We've got Mount Fuji there, 1951. When I early on worked for Elizabeth, um, so I was like 24 or something, um, we got a call from a travel agent who, uh, I think it was her mother, had um, was a librarian and had written a way to different travel bureaus all over the world, asking them for if they could spare a poster. And it was just a fun hobby of hers. They weren't worth any money at the time, um, but she amassed an incredible collection of, I think about 200 posters that then uh, were made available to us. And um, I think that poster came from that collection, uh, poster for, posters from countries we had never seen before. So that was really fun. 1968 Superman. <laughs> this is also a silk screen. Really great colors. I'm going to pull that aside. Uh, Tellier Morlot. This is another um, Calder exhibition, 1968. And we just celebrated Mardi Gras. Someone somewhere did. <laughs> New Orleans, 1965. Yeah, it's especially fun to see the travel posters these days, right? Sold a travel poster to a young couple um, for Hawaii the other day, and they were like, we can't go for a long time, so we're taking the poster home. This is also a silk screen, super fun, kind of Americana kitsch. This is 1955, South America. Yeah. Yeah, this one's really cool um, in person too because there's all these characters down on the street. There's a king down there, there's a Harlequin. South America. This is a bicycle poster showing a route around the country. Um, information panel left blank here for your local cafe or maybe bike shop to add their info for the riders to see as they did the route. Michelin Man, this is 1990. I forget the year that the Michelin Man was introduced to the French public, but it was incredibly early on. I think I want to say like 1911 or actually before that. I'll get back to you on that. But from the moment he was introduced to the French public, they loved him. Yeah, and this one, this bicycle. Um, and so uh, he's he's been prominent um, in French posters uh, for over a hundred years. Really, really nice colors that you don't see very often in this poster. This nice teal and crimson, that's 1930 for a stationery. TWA Arizona, there she is, Sunkissed. So a couple more of our fun lottery posters. I put these together because like I said, they had a drawing every week. So it was a lot of material for the poster artist to come up with. So this one artist named um, Daraway created this little guy jumping for joy with these bowed legs. And so he did a series of lottery posters all featuring this little guy, one. So there he is with his science experiments. Here he is, aviation. So whenever you see that little guy jumping for joy, you know it's a Daraway. So this is um, an exhibition poster for an artist named Capiello. He is one of the most prolific, sought after, um, uh, quickly appreciating poster artists 
out there. He's readily recognizable, the green devil. You saw various uh, uh, posters of his in our large um, show in September. So this is an exhibition of his work. One, but I wanted to show you too, is that this was the original from 1900 that this poster was based off of. That's kind of fun to see. Yeah, and this one's available for sale too. Um, I didn't put it on the list, but I can follow, I'll, I'll amend that list as we go. I will, okay. All right, Max for Toulouse Lautrec, who's one of the granddaddies of the posters. 1967, another fun Pinder poster. Um, this one? Yeah. Classic Peter Max style there. So Toulouse Lautrec, of course, was famous for his uh, paintings of Montmartre and kind of having this, um, this uh, celebrating the lifestyle um, of, of that world. Okay, Pinder, this is cool to see because there's actually tax stamps. I hope you can see them. There's a rubber stamp here, a paper stamp here. Um, again, it's like a circus poster. When companies or distributors uh, used public space posters, they actually had to pay to the city to use public space to do so. so when they did, it was given a, a stamp on the poster itself to show that um, it had been paid for. So this was probably hung and then taken down by a collector. Under, yeah. Italian great greens there for the, the bread. John Hobson Sons, an artist named Botsy with all those beautiful flags, deco. I sure can, yeah. So 1923, if there's any specific questions back there, I'll go back. This is 1895. So a lot of the early bicycle posters um, showed women um, because the bicycle, the innovation of the bicycle was huge for female independence, leaving the house wearing bloomers, being unescorted. She has, and you often see women with um, orange or red rinsed hair in the early posters. It was a symbol of modernity and independence. So on many early bicycle posters, you see this, this lady with the red rinsed hair. So that's 1895. By an artist named Misty, who did some beautiful, um, what's that? Yeah, who did some beautiful bicycle posters. I've got a couple rolled up in the large size. Not a subject matter you see every day, but this is International Beekeeping Exhibition. And that is 1961. Jenna and I have a little fan club for this poster. <laughs> I love it. All right, for the chess aficionados, this is 1986 for a tournament in Dubai. Again, a poster I have never seen before. Amazing. For Rome, circa 1950. This one? Oh, good. Good, this is a great piece. This was, I would say would be um, a minus condition. There are some light fold lines, but they haven't really done any damage. So it probably wasn't folded for very long. Where you see the damage from fold lines is if a piece was um, kept folded for a long time because the paper is acidic. So where it touches the other paper along those creases is where it builds up the acid. That's also a black background, so it's not gonna show the staining very much. On say this poster with some lighter fields of color, you see that acidification a little bit more. I'll always disclose any condition issues um, that come up, but um, this is a poster that uh, I've never seen before in, in A or very fine condition but it's it's a very important artist and subject matter paul Collan, great art deco name so this is from 1937 obviously for an international exhibition in uh, paris and rum great colors 1950 
Um, so there were some light fold lines, which caused a little bit of staining. I don't know if you can see, they're very light, but over here, and then some paper loss at the bottom, if you are able to see that. I will follow up with closer um, pictures for anyone interested in this poster and, and show you all of that. And also just to let you know, obviously we're working with this <laughs> Zoom um, technology right now. If you're a local, we can set up an appointment for you to come in and view any or all of the posters. If you are out of the Bay Area, um, I consider any sales, you know, via this format to be pending until you can really see the poster in person. So we want you to be super happy and, um, and see the piece uh, before you go forward. Well, this one. Yeah, yeah, for uh, um, instruments of music. And that is 1955. We also do custom framing here at Hammer Fryer, and we absolutely love, we've probably framed for many of you watching today. We love working with the posters. They really lend themselves to fun designs. Um, this is a gold leaf uh, uh, frame that I put on this David Lance Goins. Um, this is an old Italian frame that we can no longer even get, especially during COVID. A lot of frames got discontinued. Um, so when we can get some of these older Italian moldings, we'll try and buy them in bulk so we can keep them um, and use them. It's got a, a, a gold leaf with an acid wash on it. So really cool patina. Same here. This had an acid wash over a gold leafing as well. So you get these really interesting kind of organic um, uh, uh, effects. Um, this is a closed corner frame for this exhibition piece with some corner ornamentation. So we have a lot of fun with framing. We can certainly help you out in that regard and send you some designs. Willie's Wine Bar. So here's another of the Willie's series for Tiki, Tiki Bar, 1988. All right, here is the hot me we've been waiting for. This is the um, artistic series. We saw the sports series earlier for the Munich Olympics. This is uh, a couple of the sports series. They did something um, the Olympics committee had never done before where they commissioned leading artists of the day to do a poster and gave them free reign. Each poster is in completely different. David Hockney, um, if you've seen his work before, he was um, somewhat obsessed with the, the California swimming pool lifestyle and you get a lot of beautiful paintings of swimming pools and that kind of, you know, LA Palm Springs culture around it. Um, so he did the diver going into the, the water there. So it was designed in 1970 for the 1972 Olympics. Other, other artists, um, Soulage was the French artist. Um, Hans Hartung, I believe, was German. Um, really cool abstract, 1970. Some of them showed particular sports. Other ones were, you know, evocative of, of movement. You know, I would I would venture to guess around about in the 10,000 range. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me one sec. A limited, a very limited number were signed by the artists. And then um, past that, they, they had larger print runs um, that were then shown all over uh, the world. And then you could also, they, they had a couple different editions. There was the artistic edition that was limited and I'll have to look up those numbers. And then there was a, a, larger, um, a larger print run as well. Um, I'd be happy to get back with more specifics to the person interested in that series because it's a very cool series. We used to handle the whole um, set of them. And I think there's, I want to say 27. Um, really, really awesome. My sister has the soulage. That's a beautiful piece. Got it. So these, this is poster 90. This is by um, Alphonse Muka, Art Nouveau artist. He actually um, designed this as a, as a cover for a small collection called La Stamp Moderne. They were Art Nouveau illustrations. 
during this time period, late 1800s, this is 1898, the French were obsessed with posters. They were also just obsessed with the decorative arts. Um, so, so Art Nouveau illustration, design, um, the visual arts. And so these, a little different than posters, were actually a small set of, um, of uh, uh, artistic designs, um, lithographs. Uh, 1898 and 1904. And, and basically you would sign up, it was like a poster of the month club, except it wasn't a poster again, um, an Art Nouveau illustration and you'd receive a little, a little packet. I think it was quarterly. So every year they came out with four of these sets. So four different illustrations by these artists. And the cover was designed by Muka. This one? Yeah. Incredible colors here, uh, stone lithograph. All of these older posters are using slabs of limestone to lay the inks onto the page. And so when you get these secondary colors, that, that would be a translucent ink mixed together to create that, that beautiful secondary color of, of greens or of purples. So this is rebuilding France after World War I. This is 1921. So it's meant to really appeal to, to the French public and sense of um, national pride to protect their monuments, rebuild their railroads, et cetera. Calder exhibition, great graphics. Yeah. Super fun, playful posters by an artist named Rene Gru. We'll see more of his work too. Um, he did a lot of fun fashion houses, Dior, et cetera. And he did a lot of fun show posters. So this is circa 1965, this is 61. A French rail poster. So come out to the, the snowy slopes. And that was probably, um, you know, hung in the UK market. It's in English. And so, you know, this was a way that a particular European country could do a whole print run with the same image, but maybe change the text language and therefore be able to hang their poster all over Europe. Yeah. Yeah, classic Muka with these beautiful um, designs and ornamentation. Okay, a photographic exhibition. This is 19, circa 1960. The cool old camera there. Pictographic map of Denmark. Another one that would be good to get close enough to see. That's 1957. This is a beautiful set that Air France did. They did a number of these uh, uh, planisphere showing the earth, showing all the beautiful exotic lands to visit. So this one's for um, Provence. This was done in 1958 with the plane there. It's actually paying homage to some older Air France planispheres. They did one for the plane, the constellations. So here's the constellations up here in the, in the sky there. And that's uh, Vickers Viscount. It's 1953. All right, this is poster 100, um, Spanish actually. And this is circa 1910. So cool for you uh, transportation buffs, early aviation there. And we saw a few of these in the larger sheet size um, show in September. This is actually from the 1870s. It's a German poster for the Wissenberg Carnival. Um, the earliest posters that we've really handled, they're actually hand colored. The printing method is called typo xylographics. Really cool, just early primitive printing. And that was to let everyone know when the carnival was coming to town and all the different characters and musicians that were coming. The Basque Coast for the French railroad as well. This one, yeah, gorgeous, uh, gorgeous seaside there. And that's 1950. 
Yeah. I've got that set. Yeah. All right. Moulin Rouge. We have this in the large sheet size as well later in this table. Okay. And that's Renee Gru as well. This is an artist named Oakley. Folly Berger, just super fun. Love their costumes. And this, uh, this is an offset um, print that's 1949. Really nice printing on there. Travel to Spain, where they are horseback, 1950. You can like feel the sunshine. Le Parisien, this is a periodical, and that is 1930. 1950, cruise line. Ireland, TWA, this artist name was David Klein. He did all the, um, the posters for TWA in the 60s. Really fun style. We lock France, 1962. It's like the, the French May Day. This one? Oh. Oh, Christy, yeah. All right, this is poster 110, the Italian joy in the day and the night, 1953. Here's another by David Klein for TWA for Hawaii. And that is uh, mid 60s. They didn't keep track exactly of their print runs or numbers. The Olympics posters, we have an idea of because that was an artistic series, but for the vast majority of all posters, we have an idea of how many posters exist now, and that affects the value of the poster. Primarily the rarity is what affects the value, but it's not like they were keeping track of their print runs at the time because this was just ephemeral advertising. So especially with the early ones that were stone lithographs, after they did their print run for the day, they grind that big slab of stone down again to then use it for the next day's print. So essentially they're breaking the mold every time they make a new poster run, which is why um, it's the initial print run, that original, original print run that's considered the original poster. Yeah, grab the Italian lakes here. All right, this is a favorite of us um, for the modern posters. Sauvignacchi had a really fun sense of, you know, style and whimsy for his posters. So this is celebrating the posters of the men that Sauvignac had done. And sports, Pontepellier, this is 1998 uh, exhibition of uh, Sauvignac. So yeah, always really humorous. There's that sunshine again in Spain, 1950, beautiful flamenco dancer. And that's my Morel, he did some beautiful Spanish posters. Um, I was really happy to see this in the collection. All right, we've seen some beautiful printing. So there were print houses that accomplished this work. Um, and these two are actually posters, probably nicer to see them this orientation. So they're facing in. Uh, Edmund Sago was the name of this print house. And these are um, like almost like uh, brochures of his work because there's gold inks on them, really beautiful printing. So they did posters, stamps, they did almanacs that she's reading there. So if you saw this on the street corner, you'd know who to trust with your printing job if you wanted it done really nicely. Roger Bazome. One of my favorites right now, uh, he did some incredible paintings. He has like a collage like work. He was commissioned or style. He was commissioned by um, the French rail and then later Air France to do travel posters. So this is uh, obviously showing the Eiffel Tower, France, all of Europe. These two are part of a special series, um, World War I, so like a home front cause of conservation. These were actually designed by French school children. 
and each one highlights something different that the public should uh, do without or um, conserve so that um, you know they could be united in the war effort. So uh, this is 1918 about saving wheat, gorgeous. And this is about saving petrol. And here little Marie, she signed it here. It looks like she was 13 years old. So sometimes they would give the ages and then the names of the artists. All right, this is number 120 for reference. Yeah. Actually, Elizabeth had a beautiful collection of, of this series in a row um, in her home. And uh, they're just they're just beautiful. There's there's so much history there. With the military posters, often we think that they're gonna be really strong and aggressive, but there's really tender-hearted, beautiful um, posters that came out of military times as well about, you know, again, the home front causes, bringing the public together. Uh, cheery, you know, just great. Air France, go, go not Air France, go, uh, go to France, go skiing. This would catch your eye and you would be, you know, planning your trip, your trip there. Spain, TWA, that is also by David Klein, TWA. These are, this is actually for, uh, by two lady poster artists. Um, and she says, uh, I'm only seven years old, let me grow. So very sweet, that is 1965. And there the general is uh, kneeling or, you know, reaching down to, to help her. And she's wearing the little headdress of the Alsace region as is this lady, I didn't even plan that, but there she is. So if I understand correctly, that came out of World War I era where at least four different regions of France, women wore specific little head or hairdress elements or ornaments. So, you know, if a soldier saw a lady that he fancied, he'd know that she was from the Alsace region and he could maybe go, you know, find her. So that's the one little floor. Um, ornament up in her hat, her headdress. Is it Alsace? We saw this in the smaller sheet size. This is Rene Gru, Moulin Rouge. Fun, 18, 18, 1980. Couple more of the lottery posters. Rock and roll, uh, it's circa 1965. And here they are, you know, escaping away on their hot air balloon. That's 1957. Bernard Mimo, French Rail, SNCF. Does something come up on my computer? I don't know if that's showing the whole. Champagne Lady, 1955, super fun. Thanks, John. Um, an Infant Formula, this is 1893. So really lovely Art Nouveau style. The earlier posters contained a lot of detail of text. And if you think about it, you know, folks were on the street walking by studying the posters. So the posters could contain a lot of information that could be absorbed. It wasn't until the late teens and certainly the twenties that the posters got bigger and bolder. Um, especially thanks to our friend Capiello, they understood that they just had a second to really catch the public's eye. Yeah, so here's Sauvignac. We saw a couple exhibition posters of his. This is 1987. That's um, for surfing in Biarritz. 1947, a pictographic map of France. And if you can't tell, we love Calder around here. And that's 1960 exhibition. The exhibition posters are a really nice way to be able to handle the work of fine artists too in, uh, in an accessible format. Travel to Spain, that sun-kissed feeling again. Yeah. Buried under my posters. All right, I'll take this one. And lock the scene. Uh, 
All right. Here he is uh, starching his collar. You wouldn't necessarily change your shirt every day. That would be, you know, a, a lot. So um, what you would do would be to restart your collar. So it would at least have a nice, stiff, uh, crisp edge to it. So that's what he's doing there. Unuit. Oh, thank you. All right. Let me grab this by... Bernard Vimo. So showing what a nice night's sleep you can get on the French rail. Wearing your pearls. Early uh, train travel was dirty and loud and, you know, a little bit chaotic. So when the cars became sleeker and quieter, they really showed that off in the poster, you know, how relaxing actually a trip could be. A uh, food map of Italy. 1949, Cycles Lorette winning the laurels there. It's by uh, an artist named Razia. He's actually still working today. He was the uh, favorite artist of the Louis Vuitton company. Here's a great mustard color, um, the waiter. Um, and that is the, 20s or circa 1930, actually, a little bit later. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that Carpano has a lot of great detail seeing all the different specialty food and wine regions. Here's our friend Capiello. Um, there's a tax stamp there uh, for the Campari company. Mm. And poster 140, Italian perfume, so beautiful. Carthusia from the island of Capri, a floral scent. And uh, a couple lady poster artists as well. They work together. They did that little girl poster earlier. So showing all the fun you can get into in Vichy. Yeah. There it is. Oh, sure. Okay, so this is a, he is using a starch to starch his collar. Be a little extra, but you could uh, starch your collar. So at least you could really present like a gentleman. Sure. Fuja. So this is the typical sheet size of a travel poster, about you know, 38 to 40 inches tall, just for reference. This one is you know, 24 inches tall. This is a exhibition of posters involving tobacco and smoking, which of course there were a lot more back then. <laughs> and that is by an artist named Pierre Fix Masso, who's one of our favorites as well. We'll see more of him. The uh, butter substitute or margarine. It's great for a, a kitchen, I think, from the rooster. And that's circa 1950. Such a beauty. Nice for our wine country area. This is, a, let's see, she's kind of folding in on herself. 1930s for an agricultural product to give you a, a bountiful harvest, like a fertilizer. And same here on Grey Dalby. So everyone would have their backyard vineyard or garden. So these kinds of sulfur-based fertilizers, potassium-based were a very common household item. Uh, World War I, 1918. Air France, beautiful architectural design, 1959 for Espana. I just love this. This is Herb Morvan again. So a fair in Lyon, France. So these would have had slightly smaller print runs because it's a very specific, you know, April, 1978, beginning of April. So, you know, it, it is necessarily going to be a smaller print run because it wouldn't be able to be used year after year, right? Um, so that affected print run, uh, Willie's Wine Bar, the Lyon. Really nice one. You know, certain posters, whoops, certain posters were designed with um, 
you know, uh, like a stock image and, and open fields of, of color that more information could be added to. Other ones were designed for a very specific market at a very specific time. We had this on the table last show and it sold and we've got another one. This is uh, 1984 Willie's Wine Bar bottles. American Airlines for New York. The couple is coming out of their carriage there. And that's 1971. Here is an exhibition of Rene Gro. He was known for capturing whole movements and with just a single line. So this is really showing the beauty of his work. And there is his uh, signature up there with the G and the star. I think his mother was a fashion designer, so he grew up traveling all over Europe, you know, at her, at her heel and absorbing that whole world. Um, showing you the sun, you know, the rest of Europe might be miserable, but in Portugal, come, come enjoy the sunshine. Italian spa, this is uh, the year 2000 by our friend Rene Gru. This is a cool one. I don't, um, I don't know if anyone read the old Tintin uh, cartoons. It definitely reminds me of him. But this is an architectural exhibition uh, celebrating Corbusier. So this is 1987. Yeah. And I guess on the hillsides in Portugal, there's houses built in, uh, in tiles. So this post really captures all that beautiful movement of the lights and reflections. Rimini, Corbu, Brazil. This is a fun one and horizontal orange juice. And I think the only uh, Mexican poster I have on the table right now, Tasco, and that is the late forties. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. This is just this is just very fun. It's also nice if you have the last time we handled this, we sold it to someone for their kitchen and they just had this little nook above a window. So if you have some of those kind of interesting sheet sizes needs, that's a good one. American president lines, Yokohama. Those cherry blossoms, 1955. Here he is getting to read his newspaper on his commute because the French rail is nice and smooth and quiet. It's 1964 for a tax for the SNCF. SNCF, and that's 160, uh, poster number. Um, SNCF, uh, the Society National for the Chemin de Fer do not speak French. I'm sorry I'm butchering the accent here, but basically what that means is road of iron. So that's, that's the, the terminology that they, the French used for their um, railroad system. Okay, relax. You know, we've got you. There's no risk. You can have a nice night's sleep on the rail. SNCF. Japan, gorgeous lady in her kimono. That's done by the Japan Travel Association, uh, 1968. I love this poster because it really captures not only the speed, but that feeling of speed. So you'll get there fast and smooth and, and it's stylish. Uh, two things. Yeah. The Japan one is in a condition. I don't see... I don't see anything wrong with it. And what I'm looking for are, you know, are there tack holes have been restored because someone put it up on the wall? Are there fold lines? No. And I don't see any fading. Reds and yellows are the quickest colors to fade. Um, this is very vibrant. So I would say that this is in very fine or A condition. This is not a silk screen. This is an offset. This is an offset lithograph. Um, and printed in Japan, Japan Tourist Association. It's a very nice quality print. 
um, printing job. From what I understand, I mean, obviously you can tell posters in general were much more of a European phenomenon. I mean, in the US, we use them for uh, military print runs. It's, it's a lot rarer for Asian countries to create a poster and then to save a poster. We just don't see as many of them. It was very much a, a European phenomenon. So what I do know about this poster is that this would have been a big deal for the Japan Travel Bureau, uh, Japan Tourist Association, sorry, to put together this poster. So a very nice quality. And was this the other one that we wanted? Yeah. All right, here he is showing the pedigree of the wine because the the you know the soldier will drink it. That's 1920. That is a stone lithograph. So again, when they're doing the stones, they're using a different slab of stone for each color laid down. Bravissimo, Lido, super fun, 1983. Um, stone lithography was uh, ubiquitous, all, but especially entered in Paris, in France. Um, obviously intensive though we're talking huge you know heavy you know tons um of these big slabs of stone uh so when more modern printing methods became available like offset lithography and then to silk screens you know they would be a lot more affordable for companies to um to produce and by the way this is just an amazing poster I'll show it again 1930 um and then, but different countries adopted at different times. Uh, this is an offset from 1918. So we see early offset adoption in the US uh, during World War I. We don't see it in, in Europe and especially France till much later. I think the French loved their stone lithographs. They took pride in their posters, which is why a lot of them did survive. Um, so different countries adopted different times. Then you have to look at the historical uh, context be adopting super new technology in the middle of war time, right? We might write out war time. Yeah, no, this is a beautiful poster. Um, yeah, yeah. Really cool color palette here and just kind of this fun, playful wine, uh, vine there. So that's a stone, that's from the 1950s. This is a silk screen, good for Valentine's Day, uh, for a flower exhibition, that's 1960. Anise, Anise del Tigre, Anis of the Tiger. The leading company at the time was Anise del Mono, and they had a monkey as their um, mascot. So this company came out showing a tiger eating the monkey on its label, and that's Spanish. So we saw this referenced in an early poster, earlier poster, right? And then here, you know, you're being looked after, it's safe, you can relax. Bernard B. Moe for Bergasol, this is a sun tanning lotion. We saw this, we will see it again. Van Dauphine, and that is 1950. I think it's always fun to see posters within the poster, it's like, you know, tongue in cheek, self referential. Oh, sure. Yeah. This one came from the Maui Gallery. And uh, again, to give them a, a bit of a shout out, Alan Dakar started vintage European posters in the South Bay. Gosh, I don't even know, in the 80s, um, 80s, 90s. And then uh, when he moved over to Maui, Elizabeth Norris of Vintage European Posters bought his um, business here in California. So we're like, been kind of sister galleries and friends for years. And Alan has one of the largest collections in the world. Crazy encyclopedic memory too. He knows so much about everything, much like Elizabeth did. Um, incredible. Each, each of these posters has such a story. Um, this is Italian, Chianti. 
yeah. The little, little gnome having a, a drink there. I think it's just like a little elf. You know, he's a little gnome. Um, that's especially, uh, we'll see that a lot in the early French posters or just early European posters in general. The public knew these kind of um, characters from um, the myth mythological world. So you'll see these kind of clowns, jesters, gnomes, and then also like Greek goddess references. It was much more ubiquitous in the, in the kind of the culture. So I'm not saying that that's a Greek god or anything, but there's like this fascination with these kind of mystical um, animals and creatures. So we see that trickling down through the years. But I don't know for sure what his name is or anything like that. It's like a Bacchus, right? It's like a celebration of life kind of um, character. Uh, this is so sweet. Um, La Petite Fermier, the, the little farmer. Um, this is from 1880s. It almost looks hand colored to me. Incredible detail. This would be beautiful in like an old farmhouse setting. Um, the condition isn't amazing, but I've never, I would say it's in very fine, fine condition. Um, there's some restoration on the corner here, but I've never seen this poster before. So I'm just happy to have it in the condition that it is in. The colors are beautiful and the level of detail in the printing is incredible. Cordial Madoc, the wine that warms your heart. So it's like a warming liqueur, cordial. Victory Liberty Loan, World War I. This is by Howard Chandler Christie, known, um, known as one of his Christie girls. He often showed the kind of Lady Liberty um, character. So these are all names of different ethnicities there on the honor roll. So saying that we're all Americans, we should all support the Victory Liberty Loan. And that's 1919. This is an incredible piece. Pierre Fixmasso, we've seen a few of his pieces on the table. He had one of the longest careers of any um, poster artist, let alone just a graphic designer. Uh, he started working in the Art Deco time period, which you can absolutely see referenced here. This first um, design was done in 1932. And then they actually uh, did this poster again with that same um, design. And this was um, printed in, I think the eighties. I'll have to look, look that up again. Um, yeah, 82. So uh, he still referenced that art deco design style, but for a graphic artist to be, um, you know, au courant, both from the, the 20s into the 80s. I think, I think that he kept working until he, in his 90s is incredible. Yeah. They actually brought um, Fix Masso out of retirement to do the reopening of the Orient Express line in the 80s. And that was a whole really cool series of posters too. I've got a couple of the small ones. Um, feed your farm animals. So fun. This is from the 40s. All these happy animals licking their chops. Here's David Klein, TWA. Uh, he did two for Israel, um, one for the Christian public and then one doing a menorah for the Jewish public. So, yeah, crossing his references there. These are also designed by Warhol for the Perrier Company. So there's a green and a beautiful fuchsia pink. Mm -hmm. And Gerard Razia, this is hand signed down here by the artist. You may have seen this image before. This is what really launched Razia's career. Um, once he did this for a pasta distributor, he was signed by Louis Vuitton to do all of the America's Cup um, and other you know, car races and Louis Vuitton sponsored events. And you can see why it launched his career. It's, it's brilliant. And it's also done in a large sheet size. And then this is the uh, more medium sheet size. 
Carmen opera, super fun. There's her, her eye there with the bowl. All right, so like I just said, here's Louis Vuitton. This is fun upright. There's that ship there made out of luggage. Um, a Journey Through Time by Louis Vuitton. That is also Razia. I think we're past where I got to on the list, um, but feel free to express interest in these posters and we'll follow up with all the pricing condition, et cetera. Yes. The, oh, the, oh, okay. I'll, sh I'll show the Beatles in just a second. Thank you. Van Fu, sparkling wine. This one has beautiful detail. This is an offset lithograph. And Valley Shoes, really, really cool negative space there by Bernard B. Mo. Yeah. Yeah. The car poster. Louis Vuitton Concourse. Disclaimer, I am not a car person. I love old classic cars, but I, I am not readily knowledgeable about different races and whatnot, but it's a classic car show with Louis Vuitton. Um, and Parc de Bagatelle, this happened in September of 1996. And it is a offset, 1996, uh, sorry, 1996. And this is also signed by Razia down at the bottom here. So Razia is an interesting artist because he can study the Art Deco poster. He can study kind of the history of this art form to create his um, posters today. Whereas most of these artists were really working within their time period and their fishbowl, Razia and, and to some degree Pierre Fix Masso too, although he lived through that time period, they're able to go back and kind of study old poster designs and inform themselves. So you'll see some, you know, deco design in Razia's work. Yeah, keep these two together. Yeah. I'll go, I'll, I'll, if you leave a question about that, I don't have it written on the poster, so I can't know offhand, but I will follow up. I'm going over to this far part of the screen in order to grab, the Beatles posters. This is a really cool set by Richard Avedon. We're selling them as a set of four. You may have seen them before. They are classic. And I'll just hold them up. They're a little, they're a little curly, but again, we can follow up with better JPEGs there. But there's George. And um, Paul, hopefully that's showing up on the color there. They're sold as a set, yeah. Ringo with the dove. And John, super cool colors. These are incredibly vibrant in person. Um, silk screen. The beauty with the silk screen is you get such saturated inks that they are just incredibly vibrant. Those are beautiful in like a quadrant or a series, maybe in a white frame, maybe a black frame, just something really clean and classic. Valley shoes. It's by an artist named Charles Allo. He actually started his career designing scarves for Hermes. So he has a beautiful field of color. There's actually a couple little figures down here for scale. Stone lithograph, La Favorite. So I just have a few more posters here at the, the bottom of the pile here. Lottery, jumping for joy, learning his history. And again, winning the Grand Prix. Billy's Wine Bar. Another print of the, the Boehm run for Louis Vuitton. I love the way Razia captured um, the feeling of fall colors and that classic and the arts and crafts style of the lettering there. Mm -hmm. 
And then which one? Favorite, sorry. And don't worry, everyone, again, we've got it all in transcript. So if I'm going to miss something here, I'll, I'll go back. 2006, September 2006, Budapest, Vienna, Prague. Great feeling of speed here with the Monaco. It's the 22nd Grand Prix. Sure. Got it. And um, World War One, German soldier. You can tell because he has what was called the pickle on his helmet there goes off the edge of the poster there. We saw the large sheet size and the smaller one last show. Happy to have another small one here for the Tattinger Champagne. And this is, uh, this is a pair from 1946, post-World War II and all the, the flags, kind of a call for a united here for rebuilding, reconstruction, the European Un Union. And then finally, JB Louvet, which apparently I dressed for. This, this one we had on the table last show too in a darker red. Color. And this one I've never seen before. It's really different. It's like, a, um, this is by JB Louvet, or sorry, not JB Louvet. It's about JB Louvet, but it's by an artist named Niche. There's no sense of humor. All of Misha's posters were really fun. And um, the agent and then the blank line here, you could add more information about where your store was located. Just classic art deco, really love it. All right, thank you so much for coming. And um, thank you for leaving all your, your chats and on the list there. And uh, please feel free to follow up with any more questions or any specific interests and we'll get back to you as soon as we we possibly can. Jenna and I are going to be kind of fielding all the interests and the requests and and uh, trying to follow up um, in the next couple of days with everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Have a good night till next time. Bye bye. How do we end? Oh yeah, yeah, feel free to hang out everybody. Feel free to unmute your microphones if, you know, we can have a little after party if you wanna <laughs> unmute. Maybe we'll be able to all hear each other. I'm not quite sure. I'll just lay out the, oh, I heard somebody. Oh. <laughs> Behind the scenes, after the show, we go through all the posters and lay them down. J.B. Louvet, I think it's 1400, but I have to look it up. I don't have it on this. I don't have it written down on the poster, but I can answer that as soon as I'm done laying down the posters. J.B. Louvet. But I don't know if we've got it on the list or yet or not. I can, yeah, I can find that out pretty, pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll send a message to the, the folks, person interested in that one. Are there any more specific questions that I can answer for anybody? Yes, yeah. And I'm not sure we made made that on the list or not. Okay, we'll get back to you as soon as we can on that one. Yeah, we tried to get most of these in our spreadsheet, but we can get that over to you as soon as we sign off here. Charlie, we have a question. This is can you put it on mute on your side? 
we're both tag teaming here. So um, we have a question about your framing. And is that and also if you um, don't live locally and you have a framer that you work with, um, and if they're not familiar handling posters, we are um, super happy and available to uh, talk about how these are are properly um, mounted and uh, you know the the integrity of the poster is is um, paramount for us. I mean we come from a conservation standpoint. Um, and then we, we have a lot of fun with the designs, but obviously the conservation of an original poster is what's most important. Uh, so, you know, feel free to, to ask us, you know, what, what we recommend in terms of um, mounting. Of course, UV protection is very important. We recommend UV acrylic for the glazing. Yeah, so the Amara Blanqui, it's from 1894. It's for liqueur made in the, um, I think, out of, in Nice, France. On the bottle here, you can see there's gold. You probably maybe can't see, but take my word for it. And you can see it in person, but there's gold coins along the label. So those would have been awarded to um, the liqueur company by um, judges at international exhibitions or, or fairs. And so if a company uh, received such an honor, like a gold coin, they were sure to show it off on their label or on their poster somewhere. So this poster, I think it's an, it's an orange based liqueur. So it's probably like a very sweet uh, orange liqueur. Um, and it's really showing you the pedigree of the of those who enjoyed it. So by showing this beautiful lady, you know, sitting with this gorgeous view behind her, they're, you know, letting the public know this is really an elevated drink. 5,400, yeah. So that is a, a very rare poster. I would say the condition is fine. Um, I've never, I've never seen this poster before. So I'm, uh, so this, this is quite rare. Um, the condition notes that I'm seeing right now, there's some distress in the top, in the top margin. Um, some, I wouldn't call them tears, but they're like small creases. A restored corner up in the top left. <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. We, again, we love working with posters because they lend themselves to really fun designs. Um, just to show off these few here, um, for smaller posters, you can use a mat. I don't know if this makes it easier to see, but in this instance, I actually did use museum glass on this piece. The museum glass has an anti-reflective coating, so you can kind of see it reflects the light but it really cancels out a lot of that reflection. I would only use glass on smaller pieces like this and um, with a mat that keeps the glass up off the face of the poster itself or the paper. So that's what I did with the um, smile up there as well, that little gnome, gnome guy. And then on pieces like this, where we're doing a, what's called a direct contact overlay, we can use uh, UV acrylic. Again, the UV is what's most important and that's okay for it to come into contact with the poster itself. Um, we ship posters if you don't live nearby. Um, we can always, even the larger posters, we, we create and ship those. Um, we do a lot of design over email, especially we have this past year where you know if we have your poster we can send you you know maybe five different designs always helpful to get pictures of your home what you're thinking of where it's going to be and we can design um, virtually as well and again we're located up in healdsburg but we also have a shop down in the south bay in campbell so we often do that route of driving through the Bay Area and, and delivering posters to clients um, in the East Bay or in San Francisco. Yeah. I'll try and bring it 
over closer to the trick is where those were. So which one? Oh, ooh. What was that one called? I think it starts with an M. Bear with me, I'll find that one too. Let me just take you over. Perrier, Sactitude. Lucia. Hmm. I know they're here. It just might take a second to get down to them. I think that one was called Images Decoratifs. There it is. Okay, so that was one of them. And then the other one um, was called the Stamp Modern. Okay. This one has a really kind of haunting beauty to it. So this is 1904, this one is 2100. There's some light, let's see how close I can get here. Some light greens there. There you go, wait, there you go. Really beautiful, almost glowing. And then here they've added a panel with some more information. Lafayette, the, the street name, the library. Documents decoratifs. So that image is, is designed by Muka. And then this Lestamp Modern is from a collection that was done in June of 1898. And these are the artists the four mm -hmm. artists that are shown in this particular collection. And again, you know, the French public really had this love and fascination for posters and decorative art. So there was something called the, um, the Maitre de la Fiche collection. I actually have a folio here full of those. Um, I think those are best in person because you can really see them up close. But that was similar to these um, the stamp collection where if you subscribe to it, you would receive four matres um, every quarter uh, of, of basically large format posters that were then printed in miniature in the late 1800s, specifically for the poster collector at home. I couldn't necessarily you know, travel to Paris to go find their own posters they'd be able to receive a very manageably sized one in the mail. So that's the Maitre de la Fiche collection. We have those here. Um, and then this is the Le Stamp Modern collection, which were uh, Art Nouveau illustrations. Not yet. YMCA. This is why it's better for me to roll them off to Brazil, Rebusier, Rene Gru, Carthusia, Capri, Starch, Cordial Campari by Capiello, Carpano, Meat by Vimo, Lactosine. Spain, Surf, Smade Blue, 